I grew up in a predominantly black neighborhood in the Bronx. And, oh, don't forget your clicker. I grew up in a predominantly black neighborhood in the Bronx where my apartment building was just down the block from my elementary school. And when the weather permitted, I would go to, I would go to school early to play basketball and to recite the latest hip-hop lyrics with my friends until it was time for us to be ushered into the school where we were forced to be everything that we weren't. Quiet, docile, and obedient. When I reflect on my elementary school experience, all I can remember is getting in trouble and being reprimanded for things that did not make sense to me at the moment. Like that one time when our teacher ushered us down the hallway in the third grade towards the principal's office. She told us to be quiet, and we obeyed. She told us to stop, and we obeyed. And it was at this very moment where I felt an itch at the top of my head. I proceeded to scratch my head, and my teacher pulled me out of the line and reprimanded me in front of my peers. She then took me into the principal's office, and she called my father and explained to him that I did not know how to follow directions. It was at this point in middle school and elementary school where I just felt really disengaged and I felt misunderstood as a young male. I thought my middle school experience would be different. I tested really well and I got into a school for gifted and talented students. But this school was outside of my community. It was one of the best schools in the Bronx and it meant that I had to travel about an hour on the public bus in order to get to school. I would no longer go to school with my peers and my community and I would no longer just get up from my apartment building and walk down the block to school. Where I thought middle school would be a different experience, it proved not to be. I continued to be misunderstood by teachers, disengaged, and my authentic hip-hop self was not allowed into the school. By the time I got to high school, I was only going to school to keep my parents happy. The idea of schooling made me feel apathetic. Until I walked into my ninth grade physics class, where there was a black male teacher who was from the Bronx, who played hip-hop music as we entered the classroom. At that point, all I could think to myself was that this is really weird. Why are we listening to hip-hop music in schools? But what I soon began to realize is that this teacher allowing us to listen to hip-hop music in class and connecting science to hip-hop artifacts and hip-hop analogies allowed me to sustain my interest in science throughout high school and throughout college and motivated me to graduate with a degree in biochemistry. While away at college, I will always go back to my, my high school where I'll go back and mentor students and talk about my college experiences. And this is when I realized that my experiences in public schools were not unique to me. I went back to these schools and the students had the same looks on their faces, they were disengaged, and they were not connected to schools. And it was at that very moment when I decided that I wanted to become a teacher. I wanted to become a teacher because I wanted to push back against the oppressive nature of schooling. And I wanted it to allow young people in schools an opportunity to see themselves within the content. I began teaching in the Bronx, and I was a sixth grade science teacher where I taught amazing, brilliant, and beautiful students. I love my students. And I thought that me coming into the school, just being cool, understanding their culture, and being able to connect with them was enough to get my students excited about the content. But I quickly realized that by just understanding their culture was not enough to connect them to content. I had to utilize their culture as a conduit to teach them and get them excited and engaged by the, by the content. But I came upon this realization while at a J. Cole concert. I went to a J. Cole concert, and there's this moment during the concert when J. Cole goes, hands in the air now, hands in the air. And at this point, tens of thousands of people in the concert had their arms and hands in the air following J. Cole. They were mesmerized. But I remember thinking to myself at that point, like, J. Cole, listen, I spent a lot of money to be here. You're not going to tell me what to do. <laughs> Moments later, I too found myself captivated and mesmerized just like everybody else, and my arms were also in the air waving. And this is when I realized that hip hop can be used as a tool to really inspire, motivate, and engage young people in schools. When we think about hip hop, we have to understand that hip hop is the most consumed genre of music in the world. Hip-hop was birthed in the 1970s in the Bronx. Hip-hop was birthed in the 1970s. During a social economic crisis, the Bronx was literally burning. Landlords would light their buildings on fire just to recoup their insurance money. Those who had the social economic means 
they got up and left the Bronx in their rear view. And those who didn't, stayed. And they were forced to stay. And this is how hip-hop was birthed. And hip-hop became the voice for those who were oppressed and pushed the margins of society. And hip-hop became and started as a social justice movement. So when people ask me, you know, when I tell people I'm a hip-hop educator, they ask, you know, can you rap? And I tell them, I'm not a rapper by any means, but I'm somebody who identifies with the culture and who values the culture. So in my research, I started thinking about what are different ways that I can use the different creative elements of hip-hop to really engage and inspire my young people in schools. So when we think about the different creative elements of hip-hop, we have the MC, we have the b-boy, we have the graffiti artist, the DJ, and we have knowledge of self. When we look at the MC, oftentimes when you go to a concert, there's an MC who's, a, who's there on stage with a hype man. And in order for that hype man to be there, that hype man must know the lyrical content of the MC to fill in the gaps whenever that MC needs to take a break or take a breath. When we think about schooling, we need to think about how can we empower young people in schools and in classrooms to teach alongside their teachers. How can we empower young students to have a deep understanding of the content so they're able to disseminate that content to their peers? Because the research shows that students are able to learn better from each other because they're able to understand their realities and their experiences. When you think about the b-boy, the kinesthetic and dancing aspect of hip-hop, we need to think about how can we allow our young people in schools to move more in classrooms, and not just for the sake of moving, but how can we allow our young people to connect their physical movements with the content? and with the conceptualization of the content. As a sixth grade science teacher, I was charged with the task of teaching my students the different states of matter. And my students had a really hard time conceptualizing this, this, this concept. So I told my students, you are all molecules, each and every single one of you. They stood behind their chairs and I said, you guys are a solid. And all my students looked at me really weird, like, what do you mean we're a solid? But a few minutes later, they all walked to the corner of the classroom and they stood in rows because they knew that solids had a fixed structure and shape. I told my students, now that you're solid, you're now a gas. And my students began ran, running around the classroom and bumping into each other off the walls and off the desk because they knew that gas molecules moved around the container at high speeds. And it was at this point where students who didn't have a deep understanding of the content at that point, they, they looked and watched their peers. And they was like, wow, you know, that's how these molecules work. And they were able to learn that way. When we look at the graffiti aspect of hip hop, we think about how can we allow our students to engage in more visual arts and science and in all content areas across the board? How can we encourage our young people to conceptualize their own understanding of content? So I remember teaching the different layers versus atmosphere. And a student came up to me and said, Mr. When I look in the sky, I only see the clouds. I don't see different layers of the Earth's atmosphere. So I allowed my students to draw their own conceptualization of the, Earth, of the five different layers of the Earth's atmosphere but they had to show me that they understood the properties by showing a legend and showing symbols that were, that were correct. When we think about the DJ, the technological aspect of hip hop, we know that the DJ is responsible for setting the mood of whatever space that they're in. And we need to think about how can we allow our students and give them the freedom and empower them to set the mood of the classroom. Now, I remember growing up and even now when I write, I love listening to music and I realize that my students do too. So I empowered my students and allowed them to make and curate an instrumental playlist for the class. So during group activities and independent work, we will play this music in the back of the class. And when students will see how other students are reacting when they pick the song, they feel empowered because they knew at that very moment that they were able to set the mood. And last but not least, knowledge of self. Knowledge of self is the least known and least understood aspect of hip hop. But when we think about knowledge of self, knowledge of self pushes us, to, pushes us to remember that hip hop started as a social justice movement and it's anchored in authenticity. So how can we provide opportunities for our young people to learn about social justice issues within content areas? So in science, for example, my students and I, we explore these different social justice issues such as water pollution, climate change, health disparities within our community. We learn this information together and I charged my students to go out into the school and go out into the community and share their findings with people, making them aware of these disparities and these issues and forcing them to pay attention to them. When we think about hip hop, we know we love hip hop music, but we need to look at hip hop as a culture and as a culture that can be used in schools and that we can encourage teachers to utilize the different elements 
to then engage their students, to allow their students to feel more comfortable and to see themselves within the content. And I believe by doing this, we can allow our students who believe that their futures in education, like myself as a child, that might have been uncertain, can be a little bit more certain as they move forward. Thank you.